The following is a special presentation of ABC News and Time Magazine. Images of the 80s. With Peter Jennings. It is not very often in television that we invite you to the basement. But this is where the 80s are kept, on videotape. And kept in such abundance that you'll understand how little of it we can show you in a single hour. But on the threshold of a new decade, we do have a good excuse to rummage around down here for a while collecting those images that may instill some meaning in the decade we've just completed, maybe even give us a clue as to what we will face in the next. Ten years ago, if you'll recall, many of us could hardly wait for the 80s to begin. The closing of the Dark Vein plant will put nearly 3,000 people out of work. Many were caught by surprise when the date was moved up to January. It is a crisis of confidence. It is a crisis that strikes at the very heart and soul and spirit of our national will. Our people are losing that faith. They seem like bleak times to Americans, an endless list of things gone wrong. the highest inflation in over 30 years, lines for gasoline around the block, the worst nuclear accident in history until then. Americans wondered often if they really were in control of their own destiny. They knew who controlled the price of oil. What some people called international communism seemed to be winning, from Afghanistan to Nicaragua, while America seemed unable or unwilling to affect events. The U.S. Embassy in Tehran, 56 Americans held hostage, and by extension, the whole nation. How badly the country wanted to win one. There they are. Captain Michael Ruzzioni getting his guys up there. Jimmy Carter, on the other hand, was associated with failure. It was my decision to attempt the rescue operation. The responsibility is fully my own. Enter candidate Ronald Wilson Reagan. I am paying for this microphone. The next president of the United States, the Honorable Ronald Reagan of California. Though his answer sometimes sounded awfully simple, Reagan certainly had the questions right. Are you better off than you were four years ago? And Reagan they got. And what an impact he would have on the decade. Do you remember his inauguration day? It was hard for us to focus all our attention on Washington because so many of us were thinking about events taking place at an airport in Iran.
Images of the 80s with Peter Jennings. Brought to you by Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. And AT&T, the right choice. It was like an operation in the heart of Berlin. And the heart was divided and was cut. I'm proud of you. You hang in there all those years and you finally did it. And it's about time. I thought it was beautiful that everybody is free now. Then I called my sister in East Germany and uh, she can't believe it. She had, uh, hadn't uh, heard in the TV, not the uh, radio, nothing. I called my mother. The war is open, mother. Come, you can see me. I ran right away to the phone. So I called my mom in Germany, and she was happy. She cried, and she was. So and I said to her, I will try to come on Sunday. She said, it can't be. And I, I went on Sunday. What a wonderful world. You can see the dream of success in the eyes of people all across America. At Citicorp, we understand the dream. That's why, as Citicorp and Citibank, we've become America's largest financial services organization, already helping one in every five American families, with more home mortgages, more student loans, more MasterCard and Visa cards than any other company. We'd like you to get to know us better. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. Wednesday. You know, it wouldn't be the first time I've seen a naked woman. Yeah, but cadavers don't count, sport. What if I freeze up? Doogie Howser, MD. Oh, jeez. Dead. Jail date. Got a toilet, got a sink, only I can't tell which is which. Anything but love after Doogie Howser, MD, Wednesday. An American tradition that has endured for over a century. The Blossoms, the Bands, the Beauty. The biggest New Year's Day celebration on television begins with the 101st Tournament of Roses Parade, Monday on ABC Sports. Very often in journalism, we get to the end of a single year and say to ourselves, there's never going to be another year like that. And then, of course, there is. As we have pulled together the images which are stored here for a whole decade, we realize just what a rich and spirited time the 80s have been. Also, as you'll see, how some of the divisions in our land were more sharply defined. How, in some ways, we grew farther apart from one another. If the 70s were the me decade, the 80s may well have been the my decade. It was also a decade of some important American milestones. The 100th anniversary of the Statue of Liberty, the 200th anniversary of the Constitution, and 444 days of Iran. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear. Inauguration Day. 1981. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Day one of the Reagan era. The nation was still holding its breath to see if the Iranians would hold out on Ronald Reagan as they had on Jimmy Carter. Some 30 minutes ago. They did not. The planes bearing our prisoners left Iranian airspace and are now... Frankfurt is already a hive of activity at Rhineland. Ronald Reagan had little to do with getting the hostages released, but their return on the first day of his first term was the kind of luck that would endure for much of his presidency. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. Let us begin an era of national renewal. Ronald Reagan believed in symbol. To many, the new president himself symbolized a rebirth of the American spirit. Ronald Reagan loved being the nation's leading man. Seems like yesterday. He loved the job. Here's the pass around jar. He loved the role. And then, barely two months into his first term. Tom W. Hinckley. The president has a gunshot wound in the uh, left side of the chest. The president's courage, not to mention his sense of humor, I hope you're all Republicans, he told the doctors, warm the nation's heart. Even before he had fully recovered, Ronald Reagan was back on television. Now, 
Let's talk about getting spending and inflation under control and cutting your tax rates. The image of the ideal president. Well, it's made out of liver. I don't like liver. And it has uh, ground up worms eyes. In, it. in the 80s, television also created the ideal family. I don't like worms eyes. The not so ideal family. Mom, do you think boobs will affect my pitching? <laughs> not this season. <laughs> The totally unreal family. And in the realm of the unreal, this is the highest grossing film ever. Sometimes in the 80s, movies encourage people to think about simple solutions. The good guy versus the bad. So when terrorists struck at innocent people, Ronald Reagan ordered the military into action. Today, we have done what we had to do. If necessary, we shall do it again. It was the kind of response which at least made a powerful nation feel it was not totally powerless against a form of warfare almost impossible to stop. Throughout much of the Reagan years, the nation embarked on the biggest military buildup in peacetime history. The Soviets, they have been working, trying to develop this exact kind of system. If they should get it first, it would be a very much more dangerous world. And then he sent the Marines to keep peace in Lebanon. <laughs> Lebanon was never a simple place. And when America sided with the Christians in their civil war with the Muslims, the price was high. It was like, you'd hear about a thousand people, it seemed like, screaming, help me, God help me. 241 Marines died that day. Their commanders were unprepared for a single man driving a truck full of explosives who was ready to sacrifice himself. With our mission, there's no way we can have a 100% guarantee. It wasn't long before the Marines retreated from a place America never understood. After Lebanon, there would be no more complicated military adventures. But two days after the bombing in Beirut, the president ordered Americans into a battle they could not lose on the Caribbean island of Grenada. The Marines came in, stormed into the, into the corridor, um, yelling, American soldiers, freeze. Was it a valiant rescue of American students? Or was it designed to distract us from the failures of Beirut? The elements of the 82nd Airborne left Fort Bragg, our jump, uh, went very well. We are an American! Ironically, it would not be Ronald Reagan who would take the most decisive military action of the decade, but his successor. Only last week, George Bush sent the U.S. military into Panama to get rid of Manuel Noriega. Army! Airborne! Airborne Division! Airborne! At last, Americans found ways to face Vietnam. Rambo went back to the jungle and won. But finally, America stopped tearing itself apart over the real failure in Vietnam. Finally, the men and women who had fought there, often against their wishes, were welcomed home. Finally, those who died there were truly honored. On the subject of honor... I have sinned against you, my lord. I went into the courtroom, innocent of the charges against me, and I come out today still innocent of the charges against me. And he said, I want you to believe you can raise the $8 million. And said, if you don't do this, I will call you home. I think it was a very fair sentence if I'd been guilty. If I'd been uh, totally ethical and proper, uh, as well as lawful in my conduct at all times. As a matter of fact, I have broken wedding bonds. I think I'm probably not alone in that connection. This will not be like any campaign you've ever seen. 
and I've done some dumb things, and I'll do dumb things again. Fame is a vapor, popularity an action. Those who cheer today may curse tomorrow. Only one thing endures, carry. Well, regardless of what the commissioner said today, uh, I did not bet on baseball. The matter of Mr. Rose is now closed. No individual is superior to the game. And so often, America was at its best. 1984 was supposed to be George Orwell's year. So much for prophecy. It's morning again in America. And under the leadership of President Reagan, our country is proud. Our flag is red, white, and blue. But our nation is rainbow. Red, yellow, brown, black, and white. We're all precious. You send a powerful signal to all Americans. There are no doors we cannot unlock. The 80s may not go down as the decade for total equality, but individual Americans were constantly reaching higher and higher and higher. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th station. And then, Mission as if to remind us of our frailty. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, 9 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 7 nautical miles. Obviously a major malfunction. Wall Street the longest and most sustained boom in the nation's modern on history. Wall Street, another big gain, another record high. Junk bonds and corporate mergers helped create a whole new class of the super rich. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed works. But it didn't always trickle down, as they said it would. But there was money to be made. Sell 2,000 uh, Royal Dutch of 73 and a quarter short. 205 million shares changed hands. Double the previous... The swings record. grew wilder and wilder. It's going up and down every couple of days. It's time to get out. I think we go low before we go high. October the 19th, 1987. Black Monday. Well, I'd call it the nearest thing to a meltdown I ever want to say. It's going down and down and down. <laughs> Never stop. Rough week. Lost a fortune. After a while in the 1980s, it was harder and harder to ignore the fact that all was not well. Growing crisis on America's farms. Savings and loans are losing an estimated... The federal million. budget deficit became so enormous that people began to talk about their grandchildren's ability to pay. In the land of plenty, there was still too little for some. In the land of hope, many dreams go unfulfilled. Do you solemnly swear? And sometimes it was very difficult to find the truth. Will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God, I do. We did not repeat, did not trade weapons or anything else for hostages. The Iran-Contra affair. I don't think it was wrong. I think it was a neat idea. And Oliver North and his compatriots convinced themselves that the only way to preserve the system was to violate the very principles they were meant to uphold. Sometimes you have to go above the written law. As I said, I don't know that I did or I don't know that I didn't. Not I don't. my recollection, but I can't be absolutely... I don't uh, recall going into... The uh, fact of the matter is that there's nothing I can say that would make the situation right. I was stubborn in my pursuit of a policy that went astray. But as so often in the Reagan era, failure was overshadowed by success. Well, how do you do? Freedom is the right to question and change the established way of doing things. It was surely the most unexpected friendship of the decade. The Cold Warrior and the Communist. 
Though my pronunciation may give you difficulty, the maxim is dovayai no proviai. Trust but verify. <laughs> the one man trying to modernize his country before it falls any farther behind. The other, having made his contribution, giving way to George Bush. We do not know what the conclusion will be of this journey, but we're hopeful that the promise of reform will be fulfilled. Did any one of them have the vaguest idea of how much would change in the concluding months of the 1980s? By the end of the hour, we'll look again at some of those fantastic images which represented freedom in the 80s. But before Eastern Europe was to shake off the Communist Party, a lot else would happen in the decade. And we'll be back in a moment with some of it. A yuppie is a person who owns a Macintosh, who eats fine quiche, and drinks white wine, and that's me. I aspire towards materialism. We help more Americans go to college, and we issue more MasterCard and Visa cards than any other company. We also serve millions of customers in every major marketplace worldwide. We're Citicorp and Citibank, America's largest financial services company. Whatever financial success you hope to achieve, whether it's business or personal, we can help you do it, and do it better than anyone else. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. Some people think only foreign companies build quality cars. Now, according to an independent survey, an American car company offers you a choice of some of the most trouble-free cars you can own. That American car company is Buick. And the 1990 versions of those American cars are Buick LeSabre, Buick Riviera, and Buick Electra Park Avenue. We believe there's a new symbol for quality on the great American road. I'm only going to say this once. Remember when life was simpler? When problems didn't seem to be lurking behind every corner? When everything was as easy as making a long-distance call on AT&T? And whenever you travel, remember that AT&T is the fastest, most reliable long-distance service in the world. Choose anyone but AT&T. AT&T. And who knows what you'll get? Well, it must have been a very big moth. Saturday. This is where I kill you, Lenny. Tinseltown has Columbo working overtime. Which brings me to you. Peter Falk is Columbo, Saturday. We are reminded here why we will remember the 80s as the time of an information revolution. No longer did we in television have the only access to electronic cameras and videotapes and satellite dishes. Now the technology is available to almost everyone. This was the decade in which technology in general made our personal lives just that much richer and easier than they had been before. At least those of us who could figure out which button to push. thought the compact disc stereos on the go and facsimile imaging transmission this thing called the fax what do you do if you're away from home and you're missing the crossword puzzle you have it faxed Soon I shall have understanding of video cassette recorders and car telephones. And when I have understanding of them, I shall have understanding of computers. And when I have understanding of computers, I shall be the supreme being. We live in the age of the chip. Computers got faster and smaller. Computer users got smarter and younger. The machines were imported from Japan, but the lifestyle, all homegrown. Television, custom design, your own. Woo! Lift it up. 
I got it. Hi, everybody. This is Madison, Wisconsin, oh, where we spent a little this. vacation time. This is the same mm -hmm. Part of the new lifestyle included round the clock news. And round the clock music for the eye as well as the ear. In the 1980s, the whole rhythm of life got faster. Anything less than immediate delivery feels like a waste of time. All right, tell Stephen Nine is fine for dinner and see if you can get us into jams. If they don't have a good table, try and get something else. Ken, I need the PLs on Atlantic Overseas. I also need the latest ZBBs and PBBs. And Robin, I want you to get me the CEO of IBC ASAP. The 80s would not have been the 80s without the yuppie, the young urban professionals with disposable dollars and the urge to acquire. A yuppie is a person who owns a Macintosh, who eats fine quiche, and drinks white wine, and that's me. I aspire towards materialism. We are living in the material world, and I am a material girl. A material, a material, a material. And then, by the middle of the decade, the hidden costs of consumerism could no longer be ignored the wandering garbage barge. The greatest country on earth, and we can't straighten out a little thing like this. What, what is gonna happen if we ever get in trouble? Six states and three countries without finding a place to unload. It finally ended up in New York, where it began. There is more. During this hour alone, in America, we are pumping half a million tons of toxic chemicals. We are dumping 120 tons of toxic waste. And now we know there may be a link between record heat waves in the United States and the raging fires in the Amazon rainforest. The question is, when we look back on the 80s from a distance, will we have paid attention to the warnings? stand on the edge of the 90s, three out of four Americans describe themselves as environmentalists. A third of all people living in Britain think it's the most consequential issue facing them. In much of the world, west and east, the priorities are changing. At the Horace Porter School in Columbia, Connecticut, grade schoolers are learning a lesson early. We haven't seen our trees for a while, and we know that we're going to get to meet our tree over the course of the seasons. I want the air to be clean, the beaches to be opened with, like, not a lot of garbage on them, and um, I just like a lot of animals to be alive. I think we've learned that if students don't understand their relationship to the natural world, there might be dire consequences. The stuff that we can't recycle, we throw in the regular trash. The stuff that we can recycle, like trays, there's this thing you put it down that slides down to the bottom and then they put it to a factory. If we um, don't recycle, then we're a pollution all over the world and we don't want that. One day it's going to be their planet to manage. You're gone. Some people think only foreign companies build quality cars. Now, according to an independent survey, an American car company offers you a choice of some of the most trouble-free cars you can own. That American car company is Buick. And the 1990 versions of those American cars are Buick LeSabre, Buick Riviera, and Buick Electra Park Avenue. We believe there's a new symbol for quality on the great American road. Why can't life be more predictable? Why can't we be immune to the nasty little surprises fate sends our way? 
why can't everything be like AT&T Long Distance? Whenever you travel, remember that AT&T is the fastest, most reliable long distance service in the world. Choose anyone but AT&T. AT&T. And who knows what you'll get. Lots of houses are built from memory. Thursday, one of Washington's most successful businessmen, the convicted drug kingpin with Diane Sawyer. Plus, they called him a sissy. Now he's the stud of the Las Vegas Strip. Why they scream for Wayne Newton on Primetime Live Thursday. Strange happenings. He kept telling me he was seeing ghosts in his bedroom. He wouldn't sleep in his bedroom. He'd see them in the hallway. The real life Ghostbusters next to Raldo. Weekdays at 3 on Channel 8. Good evening, I'm George Jobs. And I'm Margaret Dubasan. Live at 931, this is a News 8 update. The freeze of 89 destroyed the $9 million citrus crop in Plaquemines Parish. People in Romania got this chilling proof of deposed dictator Ceausescu's execution. And former Panamanian strongman Manuel Noriega remains in the hands of the Vatican. We'll have those stories, sports weather, and much more on News 8 New Orleans at 10. <laughs> The Mazda race to the record is almost over. We said we'd do whatever it took to set an all-time sales record, and we're almost there. But the race isn't over yet. There's still time to get record-setting deals, including savings of up to $1,000 on 626 and MX-6. But hurry, the Mazda race to the record will soon be over. At your New Orleans area Mazda dealer now. It's a spring-like forecast ahead on News 8 tonight. We began this hour with a reminder of what most concerned Americans as the 70s came to an end. High inflation, the Soviet threat, our vulnerability to foreign oil producers. Today, Americans are most concerned with issues which in some cases hadn't even been imagined 10 years ago and which, in some ways, have affected individual American lives much more directly. In the 1970s, Americans simply didn't know they were going to be overwhelmed by drugs. You're gonna know if you're stoned. One even blow, that's all it takes. In those days, cocaine could wow. actually get a laugh. Really? And so what is the kick of it, which I, I never... <laughs> It didn't turn out to be very funny, did it? In the 1980s, someone figured out how to turn expensive cocaine into cheap, smokable crack. Crack is the hardest thing for me to walk away from. First hit was instant addiction you want more and if you don't have the money you go out stealing or you're killed you do anything for it i mean anything there has been nothing quite like it to corrupt the american dream so quickly selling drugs is simple it's easy it's fast money it's jewelry clothes you know girls everything comes with it what do you get shot at man and where there was crack there was always more crime. You sit at 7 o'clock in the evening, and people across the street are shooting at random, and you're telling your four-year-old to hit the floor. Believe me, that is war. We're getting tough on drugs, and we mean business. In the 1980s, President Reagan and President Bush each declared this, a war on drugs. This is crack cocaine. Today, there are twice as many addicts as there were four years ago. Bye, son, Eddie. 
sitting in a police car can be wasted by scum, then none of us is safe. And I don't care where you live. Small towns in America who don't have the problem now need to sit down and take a hard look because they're going to have it before long. No one laughs at drugs anymore. Today, one child out of every 10 is born with illegal drugs in its system. Maybe the war on drugs will be won in the 90s, maybe in the next century. Fighting for our lives, too little is being done too late. This has been the AIDS decade, the decade of discovery. By the end of 1981, there were about 100 cases in the world, with most of them being in New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles. We didn't know what it was. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but back in 1982, they called it the gay cancer. We thought it was some sort of cancer. A very slow journey out of ignorance. The homosexuality will never be accepted. Gay men were the first to have the disease in large numbers and suffered the greatest discrimination. Um, I thought I was a pretty good-looking guy. Uh, average, but happy. Now it's, I actually see myself fading away. Incidentally, everybody, I, I, I'm late, and I'm sorry. But until Rock Hudson died in 1985, the nation didn't pay much attention. I think the Hollywood at this point, because of him and because of AIDS, is a much closer-knit family. When a celebrity dies, people notice. But at the end of the decade, there is concern that maybe the nation is complacent again. The complacency that threatens us is lulling people into a sense of confidence that we're somehow controlling this problem, which is not under control worldwide. There are more than twice as many teenagers with AIDS, many of them runaways, as there were two years ago. Three times as many women. The heterosexual epidemic is like a, a long, slow wave that builds and builds. And we can see that wave building in the Western countries. Brian Hoyt, Gary Johnson, Bill Mercier. At the beginning of the decade, the first Ed diagnosis of AIDS. Mark. At the end, Bill more than a million people Bernie. infected with the virus in America Bernie. alone, Morales. five million in the world. Perhaps there'll be a cure or a vaccine in the next decade, or maybe in the next century. In the 1980s, when nature struck with such force in Ethiopia, hundreds of thousands of people died. Elsewhere in the world, people responded. And for as long as the commitment was extended, those of us who are so much better off made a difference. And then our attention wandered. It is sometimes difficult to see hope in all this, but there is this much. Science and technology have now reached a point where this loss of life and land can be reduced, if not eliminated. It has become more a matter of political will than anything else. For drugs, more money, education, and law enforcement. For AIDS, more research and more attention subjects for the next decade or maybe the next century did you know if you're an MCI executive or a Sprint Dial 1 customer and your business spends over $50 a month you could be in the wrong plan you can save money with the new AT&T Pro Watts and we're gonna make it easy we're so sure that you'll see the difference We'll pay to sign you up, we'll pay to switch you over, and if you're not satisfied within 90 days, we'll even pay to switch you back. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-222-0400. New AT&T Pro Watts, another AT&T advantage. This December, things are really heating up. Heating up at every GM division. Each dealer is out to make December hotter than ever before. 
like with Oldsmobile's new generation celebration. With GMAC financing as low as 4.8% for 48 months on select models. And factory to dealer cash, which dealers can pass along to customers. Yes, this December is incredibly hot at every GM division. It's GM's hot December. Come feel the heat. For over a hundred years, in countless warm and friendly places, it's been Miller time. At Miller, we're proud to have always brewed our beer carefully and responsibly. And that's how we'd like you to drink our beer, carefully and responsibly. So the next time you're having any one of our beers, the next time it's Miller time for you, we'd like to ask you to do one very simple thing. Be responsible. Think when you drink. Make me rich, you say? How about $20 million rich? From American Family, January 26th. You heard right, $20 million. And the winning number may be in your hands right now. Don't miss out. There's never been a prize this big before. In America's only sweepstakes with my picture, the American Family sweepstakes, the one with the giant $20 million prize, all for you. Enter today. Tomorrow, the future of baseball with Commissioner Faye Vince and also Sylvester Stallone, Joanna Kearns, and Dan Loria on Good Morning America tomorrow. From our point of view, there is simply no argument about the most remarkable story of the decade. They say you can't capture the image of freedom on videotape. But you can, you know. In fact, of all the images in the 1980s, surely the most vivid are those associated with freedom. In some cases, freedom which had been unthinkable as the decade began. A student. A housewife. A playwright. Electrician. In the 1980s, they truly influenced the course of history. It was a good decade for democracy. It first stirred in Poland. Lech Wałęsa led the strike at the Lenin shipyard in Gdansk for lower food prices. But Poles were really bidding for more control of their lives. Solidarity, the first independent labor union in the Soviet bloc. But when the union challenged the entire communist system, the Polish military, fearing Soviet intervention, declared martial law. The union was outlawed, its leaders arrested or driven underground. It was too soon for solidarity. But its time would come. In the Soviet Union, the 1980s began with very familiar images. But the old order gradually died off. Within two years, an era no one had foreseen would begin. <laughs> Mikhail Gorbachev demanded change. His nation was slipping ever closer to third world status, so he called for the economy to be restructured, for incentives to be encouraged. Perestroika. He freed dissidents and made it easier for people to emigrate. He called for a new openness. Fair constitutional change is what we need here. For debate and criticism. Once and for all, let's get rid of reserved seats for party organizations. Glasnos. And the stirring became real light. The movement for change in China was already underway when Mikhail Gorbachev came to pay a visit. Gorbachev and Deng Xiaoping toasted the first Sino-Soviet summit in 30 years. But in Tiananmen Square, the inspiration was democracy. Government, other people, better people, poorer people. 
We just want to have some change in the China's uh, political and economic strike. system. We strike, strike, and strike. seen everywhere. These are some of the brightest images of the 1980s. Today, we unveil a statue. She is the goddess of democracy. At first, this enormous energy for change gave many people hope. but then the response of an aging and insecure Communist Party. These are some of the darkest images of the 1980s. And these may be the images which endure. In the 1980s, television conveyed so many images of people facing overwhelming power. <laughs> Palestinians trying to free themselves from Israeli rule. South African blacks trying to free themselves and win black majority rule. We don't shoot people who are in opposition to the government. In so many places, it was a bloody struggle just to make a few yards. In so many places, democracy was a work in progress. In the Philippines, they called it the People Power Revolution. The moment they can prove to me that I'm an unwanted, what do they call me, dictator, I'll uh, get out. I hereby affirm my candidacy. We have done everything to make the elections fair, honest, and clean. This has been a violent and shameful election in terms of the fraud and intimidation. Aquino! It was a struggle, but eventually the people of the Philippines drove Ferdinand Marcos from power and elected Corazon Aquino. Two years and six coup attempts later, President Aquino is just holding on. In spite of all of the coup attempts, you have stuck by me. Democracy in the Philippines is still a work in progress. But the power of the idea was everywhere in the 1980s, in Argentina in Haiti, in Korea, in Pakistan, in Chile, in Eastern Europe, which the Soviets had held by force since World War II, Mikhail Gorbachev said that Moscow would no longer interfere, and the people felt free to act. solidarity was never dead only in hibernation today the independent union movement leads a government with a non-communist majority solidarity's time had come after all In Hungary, where Soviet tanks had broken the last revolution in the 1950s, the revolution of the 80s was gradual. But the Communist Party was forced to apologize for the Soviet crackdown in the 50s, and the party was forced by the people to call free elections. And when Hungary began to roll up the Iron Curtain, tens of thousands of East Germans saw it on West German television. 
the word spread in no time. First, they headed for those openings in the fence between Hungary and Austria. Let's go! And then they headed for the West German Embassy in next door Czechoslovakia. The pressure of East Germans fleeing in such numbers forced the East German government to make one concession after another. The country was hemorrhaging. The pressure was too much. The communist leadership buckled. Travel restrictions, it said, would be lifted. It was a momentous declaration. And that very night, for the first time since 1961, they made a hole in the Berlin Wall. It had not seemed possible only months ago. Now anything seemed possible. Romania. In the last days of the decade, even the hardline leadership of Nikolai Ceausescu, who had gunned down his own people to stay in power, finally folded. Czechoslovakia, with one of the toughest leaderships in the Soviet sphere. And the Communist Party was brought down in less than a month. At the end of the 1980s, so many walls were coming down. It was a magnificent decade for democracy. Images of the 80s with Peter Jennings, brought to you by AT&T, the right choice, and Buick and your Buick dealer, the great American road belongs to Buick. Some people think only foreign companies build quality cars. Now, according to an independent survey, an American car company offers you a choice of some of the most trouble-free cars you can own. That American car company is Buick. And the 1990 versions of those American cars are Buick LeSabre, Buick Riviera, and Buick Electra Park Avenue. We believe there's a new symbol for quality on the great American road. Did you know that now almost any size business can save with AT&T? If your business is spending as little as $50 a month in long distance, you can save 10 to 28% or more with the new AT&T Pro Watts. It works over your regular telephone lines, and you automatically get bigger and bigger discounts. The more you spend, the bigger the discounts. Whether you're spending $50 a month up to $5,000 a month, we have the one plan for you. Call us. We'll even waive the sign-up fee. Pro Watts, another AT&T advantage. Citicorp, America's first global financial services corporation, has the power and the resources to help you with all your financial needs. Our bank, Citibank, is the most widely used by American corporations and individuals. As Citicorp and Citibank, we serve over 27 million customers in 90 countries. In fact, Citicorp, known worldwide as the financial leader, is ready to do whatever it takes to help you succeed. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. Hey, 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 hey. Listen, if I give you all some wine, do you promise to get out of the kitchen? Mm -hmm. Depends on the wine. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you like it. Just try it. Oh, this is so nice. Have we had this before? No, I found it something different. Oh, my gosh. It's a gallo. When they start making this. Y'all happy? Yeah? Good? All right, so out. Ernest and Julio Gallo invite you to try a remarkable wine. White Grenache. It will change the way you think about Gallo. 
brief profile of the foremost television journalists in the world today. ABC News. We're changing the face of television news. He's a priest with a new kind of collar. I'm sort of an armchair detective. She's a sister of mercy. Actually, I'm with a much tougher unit than the police department. The God Squad's back in all new Father Dowling Mysteries, Thursday, January 4th. And so we come to the end of this hour. It is frustrating not to have included more. It was a decade of such incredible contrasts. The first flowering of freedom in Eastern Europe and a warning that the planet would not replenish itself indefinitely. A time of such change that most of us were unprepared for it. There's no way to tell whether the Iron Curtain has risen on a lasting age of freedom or whether it will merely be a passing phase. But from this vantage point, the 90s seem full of promise. And having seen what is possible in so many ways during the 80s, we have surely learned that some of the oldest and most unyielding problems can be solved. So have a good decade. I'm Peter Jennings. Good night. Good evening, I'm Margaret Dubasan reporting from the News 8 Newsroom. The fate of ousted dictator Manuel Noriega, next on News 8 New Orleans tonight. Transcript, please send $4 to Images of the 80s, Journal Graphics, 267 Broadway, New York, New York, 10007. The preceding was produced by ABC News and Time Magazine. ABC News and Time are proud to make available the video cassette version of the preceding program, Images of the 80s. To order, simply call 1-800-238-3900 and have your Visa or MasterCard ready. You will be billed $19.98 plus $3.95 shipping and handling. Images of the 80s, available exclusively from MPI Home Video. This has been a special presentation of ABC News, where more Americans get their news than from any other source. This is ABC.